It's the last emotional that I'm recording today and enjoying, oh, the time that I get to come out and watch the wind blow through the trees, the time I get to see the darkness begin to creep in and the lights change or come on if they're automatic, and the time that the stars begin to slowly pierce through the vague veil of, you know, kind of the lightness until it gets dark enough to see the light. You know, are you like that? When there's darkness, are you the light? Are you a star shining in the night? Are you that hope that someone needs when everything has gone dark and they have nowhere to turn and are in despair? Or are you the darkness? Jesus said, If thy eye, your eyes, be full of light, and it takes in the light, how great and how full is the light within you. But Jesus also said that, if your eyes be full of darkness and that that's all you see, if it be violence, if it be anger, if it be wrath, if it be malice, if it be sensuality, if it be sexuality, if it be perversion, and that's what you see, how great is the darkness within? When I look at the night, I don't see how dark the day has become, I see how bright the stars are shining. Don't you? Isn't that what you are meant to be? A bright, shining star when everything's getting darker in the world? When everything's falling apart? Aren't you the one that people look to and cling to? Don't you have a word of hope when everyone else has lost their cookies because everything has been destroyed? Are you the one? If you're not, turn your life over to the Son of God. Give Him your life and let Him show you what He wants you to be. Because I can tell you this. I love the changing of darkness to daytime, and daytime to night, and nighttime to daytime. I love the everyday going on and doing the normal routines that most people think that is a nice, peaceful, regimented, regulated life. But I don't see that in the world. I see change. I see things happening. I see process being developed. I see you becoming a man or woman of God. And I also see the end of the world. And because of that, you need to get it together, get right with God, get your life itself, your body, your soul, your being filled with oil, that you would be a bright light shining in the darkness of the world. Don't go out and try to cast light on some foolish enterprise and waste your oil on some political change that's going to happen every four years or eight or two, <laughs> I can say a prayer and we could get that all changed in immediately. I can change the heart of any man that I see. All they need to do is ask God for that. But what will you do with your heart? And where will you turn it? And will you open yourself up and put yourself in the hands of a living God and let Him form you, fashion you, and make you into the vessel He wants you to be so He can pour His Spirit into you and then he could flick his pick and light you and make you the light so others are drawn to you as you reveal Jesus inside you are you the one Spurgeon after that you have suffered a while make you perfect establish you strengthen and settle you. 
You have seen the arch of heaven as it spans the plain. Glorious are its colors, a rainbow, <laughs> and rare its hues. It is beautiful, but alas, it passes away, and lo, it is not. The fair colors give way to the fleecy clouds, and the sky is no longer brilliant with the tints of heaven. It is not established. How can it be? A glorious show made of transitory sunbeams passing through raindrops? How can it abide? The graces of the Christian character must not resemble the rainbow in its transitory beauty, but, on the contrary, the Christian character must be established, settled, and abiding in you. Seek, O oh believer, that every good thing you have may be an abiding thing, that continuance that keeps on. May your character not be a writing upon the sand, but an inscription upon that rock chiseled into the bedrock of your soul. May your faith be no more baseless fabric of a vision that just is forgotten or distorted in time, but may it be builded of material able to endure that awful fire which shall consume the wood, the hay, the stubble of the hypocrite. May you be rooted and grounded in love. May your convictions be deep, your love real, your desires earnest. May your whole life be so settled and established that all the blasts of hell and all the storms of earth shall never be able to remove you. But notice how this blessing of being established and being in the faith is gained. The Apostle's words point us to the suffering as the means employed. After that you have suffered a while. It is of no use to hope that we shall be well rooted if no rough winds pass over us. Those old gnarlings on the root of the oak tree, those knots, those strange twistings of the branches, all tell of the many storms that have swept over it, and they are also indicators of the depth into which the roots have forced their way. So the Christian is made strong and firmly rooted by all the trials and all the storms of life. Shrink not then, from the tempestuous winds of trial, but take comfort, believing that by their rough discipline, God is fulfilling this benediction in you. When it is dark, when people are in despair, when there is no hope, are you the light? When God calls, are you the one? I don't know. Only you do. A Christian's success is not measured by the notches on his Bible, but by the tears in his soul. The scars he bears on his heart and the ache that he feels in his being echo the words that Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me. For if you, do that, for if you have not suffered with him, you will not be exalted with him. It is the sufferings of Christ. brings us to joy, the wonder of the eternal life of forever with God.